Hello everyone. It's Thursday night and it's time for Live with Brushed by Brandy. Um, so I'm Brandy and I'm the Dixie Bell brand, uh, uh, Dixie Bell Paint brand ambassador. And so tonight, what I'm going to do every Thursday night live with you guys, I work on a piece and we work on it over the course of several weeks start to finish. So we're on our third, our third week with this piece that we're working on tonight. Um, I'm going to show you the next few uh, stages in it. And I was hoping I'd finish it tonight, but I think it's actually going to be next week that we finish it up. So, but we're going to make some exciting pro progress on this. And then you guys were also going to be doing a, a paint giveaway. So we're going to be giving away an eight ounce of Dixie Belle paint in your choice of color. Um, to be entered in that, I need you guys to like this, uh, like the Dixie Belle page, like my page at Brush by Brandy, and then share this post. Let me know that you guys did it. And at the end of the broadcast, I'm going to go on and choose a winner live. Um, you guys, my husband Sean is here to help us answer questions. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Um, and also, please, your feedback is really helpful. If you guys can see the broadcast and if it's clear on your end, once again, we're trying new solutions. We have another one this week, so um, we are trying stuff. We have the kids on a bicycle pedaling for a yeah. better signal. Yeah, like a hamster wheel going <laughs> in the background. It's, it's going to work great. So last week, you guys, I was not in... Um, I was not in my mode, you know, when you get into your zone and I didn't find my zone last week. And so there's a couple things I'm going to um, redo again with you guys tonight. But um, I wanted to start out by showing you kind of everything that I'm using on this piece right here is what I've got laid out on the top. And what I do is I just kind of keep my supplies together through a, pro, um, through a piece, through a project. So I have everything at my disposal. My Ideally, I would love to have like a project cart and I have some, they're just not cleared off, that goes around with that piece and that's my project cart. So my colors, my top coat, my stains, whatever I need for that piece kind of stays with it. But this is everything we're using. I've got my Voodoo Gel Stain out. We're gonna use this tonight. We're gonna use some Dixie Belle Patina Paint tonight. Um, and then these are the paint colors that I've used on this piece. So let me move all this stuff over to the side because we're going to work on the top right now. Get some of this out of the way. Finally, you're cleaning up the garage. Yeah. My side of the garage is the cleanest part of the garage, you guys. Oh, come on now. <laughs> no, you know what my husband does to me? So my workspace is the cleanest part of the garage. And so it's it's got open space in it. And he'll come and be like, can I put this in your workspace? I just need to put it somewhere. And I'm like... No! <laughs> Keep stuff out of here because then I constantly am cleaning it and someone else comes behind me and puts stuff in it. We're building our house, so there's always, I mean, there's always some place, some stuff that we need to put. I just think you have a bad attitude about I it. I do have a bad attitude when you're shoving stuff in my side of the garage. So, if you guys remember a couple weeks back, we um, stripped this top down. And I stripped this top. Not because you don't have to strip to use Dixie Belle Voodoo gel stain, but this top was in really bad shape and I would have had to sand it smooth anyways. So I chose to just take that clear coat off completely um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna redo it with a new clean top. So I've got, um, we stripped this with a chemical stripper, stripper, we did it on camera, and then I sanded it with an 80 grit a 120 grit and then a 220 grit. And that's where I am right now. And then it's been covered with a towel since then. Um, let's see, there's a few spots on here. I'm just gonna go, because it's been sitting covered, I'm just gonna give it a little step sanding just to freshen up this, so it accepts the stain that I'm gonna put on it. Just letting you know we're going blurry. Uh -oh. On this side of the coin, not so much, but so you guys, we've been reading up on download speed versus upload speed and, and you know solutions to that. So I'm carrying an app tonight that actually one of you guys suggested, and I really appreciate the suggestions because I'm not tech savvy, so I'm learning. Um, so we're carrying an app tonight that uh, was suggested. Hopefully that helps, but um, okay, so I've got a nice clean top here. So Voodoo Gel Stain is Dixie Belle's water-based gel stain. They have two gel stains. They have No Pain Gel Stain, which is an oil base, and then they have Voodoo Gel Stain, which is a water base. Um, I'm gonna use the Voodoo because I want a little bit of a thinner coat. I wanna see this um, wood grain that's in the top here. So I'm gonna use the Voodoo Gel Stain because it's a little bit thinner. It goes on really nicely, guys. It comes in these nice, 
um, squirt bottles. So sometimes I will streak this in directly on the top of my piece and get a really streaky look that's pretty. Can you do me a random favor? Yes, sir. You see there's a sheet right there. Yeah. I'm curious to see if I cover that piece right there because the camera focusing or wanting to. Oh, is it the, the lines? Well, it's getting blurry and it seems to be that's the common thread. All right, give it a few seconds, guys, and then let me know. Um, okay, so I'm going to use um, Dixie Belle Voodoo Gel Stain, and I chose Tobacco Road for this piece, but I've also got out some Black Magic, which is a black, and then I've got out Up in Smoke, which is a gray. So Tobacco Road is the most brown of these, and I chose that because I wanted it to kind of tie into our copper hardware that's going to go on the front. So I thought I've got warm tones in my hardware. Um, I'll do some warm tones in the top, and then it'll hit, you know, the top, the hardware, and then we're gonna we're gonna do the legs as well. That's kind of what did it, apparently. Oh, okay. The sheet. All right. Thank uh, you, ladies. You guys don't need to see that piece anyway. I already posted pictures <laughs> of it. It's no surprise. Or my dress. So, so I have a little dish here. I'm going to just put some of the, see how it comes out like a liquid. Can you guys see that? It's like squirting ketchup. So I'm going to squirt some into this dish here. I have a rag on hand. And then I'm going to take my Dixie Belle brush. This is my Dixie Belle mini. These are my favorite of the Dixie Belle brushes. I use them the most. They actually have a new Dixie Belle mini angle too that just came out. That's got an angle tip on it. But they're a really nice, soft, flexible tip brush. They were made for using with Dixie Belle paint, with, a, with chalk style paint. So they really hold the perfect amount of paint. Um, they're my favorite brushes. They just are. I, I never was a brush knob. If you guys watched my early videos, I used cheap hardware store brushes. But I won't go back from these. I genuinely like them. So I'm just going to brush on this Voodoo Gel Stain. Um, it brushes on really easily. Oh, Palmdale, California. Oh. You guys, you know what I was thinking about tonight? Like last week you guys were commenting I was wearing shorts on camera and tonight I'm like bundled up in a sweatshirt. Like the weather here is totally bipolar right now. Um, we're, we were in summer for a minute and the, or spring for a minute and now we're back into winter. So just gave us a little teaser last week. <laughs> So much for that. Yeah, I don't our, like it. We got our boat out and everything. Ha ha, what were we thinking? Stupid Californians. So I'm just brushing this on. I'm going to get a nice even coat. And I need to put a little bit more in my dish. A little bit go, goes quite a long ways, though. So can you actually water this down? It's a water base. So anything that's water based is friendly to To water. kind of thin it out, yeah. get control the look. Yeah. Um, it's already fairly thin. I mean, what's it? It's it's a watery consistency, but you can if you want to get it even thinner than it already is. It's water based. Anytime something's water based, it's friendly to water. So, um, yeah, whatever the consistency is that you want. Now I'm gonna wipe this back, so it's going on heavier than what I'm gonna, and I'll do that in just a second. I just want to get a coat on first, and then I'm gonna come back and wipe it back. It's not gonna stay this dark of a color. You know, like with most stains, when you put them on, it's what, what can is going to seep into the wood. And then the rest we're going to wipe back off. Now, how long does it take to cure? Uh, um, as far as curing, we're not waiting for anything to cure. I just want this to soak, dry enough. soak into the wood. So um, once I stain, I usually wait overnight to put a top coat on. Um, if you're using an oil-based top coat, that can be a little bit longer. But this is a water-based top coat, so it's not going to be, um, you know, like I said, it's friendly to anything water-based. And uh, Dixieville top coats are water-based top coats. And what color is that that you're using? This, I'm using Tobacco Road, which is the dark brown version of the Voodoo Gel Stain. So I'm just evening out the coat I've got on here. So let's go back to you stripping the, the top. Yes. Do you put anything on there or do you go straight from sanding to this? I would go straight from sanding to this. Uh, if I had stains or an uneven wood, I, you could use a wood conditioner. I do not have a wood conditioner on here. Um, you don't have to strip for, for Dixieville 
paint, you could put Voodoo gel stain over an existing finish. If it's in a, a good shape and you just want to freshen it up, these can go over an existing finish. In this case, my top was in such bad shape. Um, the clear coat was scratched and chipping and it had, um, I mean, it was just in bad shape. So I chose to just take that clear coat off, get it down to the bare wood, and now I'm just gonna add some color to it again. And we'll put clear coat on it again too. Couple okay. of quick things, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Um, Valerie says she checked out Spoonfly. If you put it over your raw paint, you wanna kinda of dirty it up a little bit. So I've got my coat of stain on here and now I'm just gonna take a clean rag. Oops. Piece and move the, the piece and I'm going to wipe it back and it's now it's soaked into the wood so you can mix the colors of booty gel stain so if you wanted this to be you know a grayish black or um, you know if you wanted to mix a little gray into your brown you can really custom okay and we're back okay sorry about that guys we had to reconnect for that so I really wanted min minimal penetration into the wood so I just did a light coat. If you want it to be um, thicker, you can keep layering this on, let your coat dry, come back and put another coat on. So I think this is pretty. This is a nice warm wood color, and I think it's gonna tie in really nicely with the copper that we're gonna put on the front of this piece. That's why I went with kind of a warm wood color. I'm thinking anything that provides a sheen the camera must do something with because it's it gets we're not talking about the camera, we're talking about signal. Your, if it was our You're camera, fine. it would be um, fuzzy on your end too. Okay, so that's nice and white back. It's wet, I can feel it. Um, uh, one thing, if it still feels kind of cold to the touch, then it's still um, evaporating and absorbing into the wood. So. Until this feels dry and not cold to the touch, um, I mean, it feels wet, I would not top coat this. So let it dry, let it soak into your wood, and then um, we're gonna do it next week. If I was doing it at home, I would do the front. Last week, you guys saw me um, put paper onto the front of this piece, and I started on this top drawer, and I wasn't in my groove, so I did some things that afterwards I was like, oh, what was I thinking? You guys asked some great questions, so I'm gonna go back and do it tonight because I never wanna leave you guys with information um, you know, that I would change myself. So I'm gonna go back and do this drawer tonight and make some corrections to what I did last week. Okay. Okay, so I'm getting all my supplies out. I'm gonna put, put some paper on the front of this drawer. Um, when you use paper as a decorative accent, it's called decoupage, so we're gonna do some decoupage. Sorry guys, we're trying. Um, okay, so this is the paper that I'm using. The paper that I used on this piece is a, it's a plaid gift wrap that I just got from Target. Um, using this paper, it's not my favorite paper to use. It's a little thin. And the other thing I'm not caring for as much about it is the back of it is white and the front of it's black. So when I cut this paper, um, the cuts show as white along the edges. So what I did here is I just went back and I took a little trim brush and I just hit the edges with some black paint so it, it blends in. Um, otherwise you can see where I cut this paper. So I'm gonna pull this drawer out. Okay, so the number one thing that I did last week is I didn't paint the drawers before I put the paper on. That's stupid. Yes, you should paint the drawers before you put the paper on. So I stopped myself and I went back and painted the drawers. Now, um, the reason for that is on the cut edges, if your drawer is wood underneath, then you're gonna see the wood color underneath the paper. It was just a, you know, I was going too fast and I wasn't thinking clearly. Painting live can be nerve wracking no matter how many times I do it. Um, and so that was a, an error that I made on camera this week. So I'm gonna pull this drawer out. And the reason is because I'm using a plaid, I'm trying to line my plaid up on my drawers. So when I'm cutting the paper for this piece, I want this one next to it so that I can line my plaid up and make sure when my drawers go back in, because if this is offset, you're really gonna notice. 
put it right next to this one. Okay, this is my same piece of paper that I cut from. The other thing I did last week, you guys asked some really great questions. And if something, if something I do feels wrong, like go with your gut, you guys, because I'm showing you one thing on camera, and I'll come back and correct it either in the comments or um, on camera like I'm doing this week. But but if something seems wrong, you know, do it, go with your gut and do what you feel seems right. I'm just always going to be showing you one way, but it's never the only way. So the other thing I did last week when I cut this piece of paper, um, I cut the bottom portion off and the bottom is where it lines up to each drawer. So I needed to cut the top of it off instead, if that makes sense. So I made that correction too. So now my plaid lines up. So let's go ahead and cut this piece of paper to fit our drawer. I'm going to kind of line it up. Make sure I don't cut it wrong. Kind of get one shot at it. Scoot myself over here. Because this is the side I cut the rest from, so I want to start over here. I'm going to line this up. And once I feel like I've got a good line all the way across, I can go ahead and cut this. I don't want to cut it short. I'd rather cut it big, if anything. I should use scissors. I have a razor blade out, but I'd rather have scissors on. I'm trying to catch an angle so it's not so bad. So I'm going to leave it a little long on the top, and I'm going to come back with my scissors and just cut. Now this piece at the bottom is just going to be waste since I don't have any more drawers to do. So I'm not really concerned about this being a straight cut or, you know, even or whatever. If it's too long, I can shave it off because it's my bottom drawer. So I'm just cutting this. I'd rather cut it long. Okay, so that's not an even cut. That's okay because it's my bottom drawer, not super important. The other thing I did last week that I didn't care for is I back buttered this paper. I like to back butter the paper, but because this is a thin paper, it caused it to curl. So I'm gonna take my gator hide out. We get the price using gator hide. Um, and this time I'm not gonna put it on the back of my paper. So three changes I'm making. I painted my drawer. I cut my paper from the bottom, not the top for the top, not the bottom. And then I do, I'm not gonna back butter the paper on this one. Um, some papers are thicker and I like doing that. This is a thinner paper and um, it just didn't work well. So I'm taking my Dixieville mini brush and I'm just gonna brush on a nice even coat of Gator Hide. Um, Gator Hide is a Dixieville clear coat. It's the toughest of all their clear coats. It is water repellent, so it's great for heavier use projects. In this case, I like it because I'm putting paper on a piece, so I want it to have extra protection. And this is gonna be the clear coat I use over top. So I use the same clear coat over top as I do underneath. So super easy. Clear coat on my drawer. Set that aside, and now I'm gonna take my piece of paper that I cut. And this is where it's important, when I lay it on, you can't move it a lot because the paper gets a little soggy. I'm gonna line it up to that drawer so that when I place it on, I can line up my stripes. Okay, so that's pretty well lined up. Yeah, I like that location. So now I'm gonna come back with my this is called a brayer, and what it is, it's a little like rubberized rolling pin. These are just two different kinds. It's a craft store item. And I'm going to roll out the bubbles on my paper. So once again, what did you put down as an adhesive? I put down Dixie Bell Gator Hide, which is one of their clear coats. Um, I know it works well as an adhesive, you guys, and I'm going to tell you how I know, because I've had to remove it before. <laughs> um, I did a piece a while ago, and got some on the front of my paper. I um, messed up the placement of my paper and had to remove it, 
you cannot remove it. I had to sand the paper off. So that gave, oh. <laughs> that's a horrible experience, but it gave me the confidence that this works great as an adhesive. <laughs> the one time you don't want it to? Yeah, exactly. I, I, and it wasn't even, I had, it hadn't even been on for long either. And I mean, there was, there was, it was not going to come off. So you can see I've got big air bubbles in here and I'm just pushing them out to the edges of my drawer. You can push it up and down as well. I really just want to get it nice and smooth on my drawer front. I've got a little wrinkle right here, so I'm just gonna pay a little extra attention to that spot and roll that wrinkle out gently because the paper gets fragile once it's wet. It's wet paper. Wet paper gets soggy, will tear if you overwork it. Um, this is harder for me with thinner papers. Some people prefer like paper napkins and tissue paper. I prefer thicker papers like, like gift wrap. Um, that's just personal preference. You really have to play around with it and learn to get a feel for the different papers. This is that wrinkle spot. This brayer is a little firmer and I'm just paying extra attention to roll that out. Worst case scenario, you might have one time you could lift this and replace it back down. But the more you lift your paper, the more likely you are to get a rip in it. And what kind of paper is this? This is a gift wrap. This is from Target. Um, it's a little thinner than I prefer to work with. The Spoonflower gift wrap is thicker. Um, Zazzle is another place to get custom papers from. Um, I'll give you another example. I was at I was at Home Goods the other day, and I just picked up um, metallic gift wraps. Tend to be a little bit thicker, but I can feel the thickness of the paper through these. These were $3.99 a roll, and they would be pretty on like a drawer side. That's metallic silver. If that comes up. If what? In the picture. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Um, and those are, you know, fairly inexpensive. So I pick up pretty papers as I, you know, wherever I find them. I don't know what I'll use that on, but I'll keep it in my stockpile. Yeah. It's almost like a brushed metal look. Yeah. Hmm. And then this one has kind of a filigree design on it, but it's also a metallic. Like I said, metallic gift wraps tend to be a little bit thicker. Um, but you could do, you know, just a small door area or something, and it could be a really pretty accent. I thought this would be pretty with like a rose gold piece. I don't know. We'll see. I don't have a use for them yet, a project. I'm getting all the bubbles out on this. Mary says her paper is coming from Zazzle and she can't wait. Yes. Zazzle has a great selection. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with this. So, um, a couple options. Once your paper is placed and you like the placement of it, I won't lift that. I was going to see if I could lift it, but it's it's fairly stuck, and you can kind of feel that if I lift it, it's going to tear. But I got a, a wrinkle right here that I want to get out. I'm going to work it a little bit more. Okay, and then what you can do, this is a sanding block, but it's a more abrasive sanding block. What is this? So like an 80 grit sanding block, and you can come back on the edges of your paper. Huh. Instead of cutting it. Yeah, instead of cutting it, sometimes I cut it um, using a razor blade. Hey, look, I even learned things too. Yeah. <laughs> My husband should be a painting expert. Can you guys, you guys might not be able to see, but this is where it, I just exposed those white edges and that's where I just came back with a little bit of my paint and hit the edges of my paper with some paint to turn them black again. So you can see I did that edge. Now I'm gonna come down here. My paper is wet, so I don't want to cause too much friction on the front of it. That's why I'm kind of hitting it downwards. And then it kind of scores the paper, and you can just tear that, tear that off. Gives you a nice clean edge. Yeah, 
catch it from this side. Let's see how that... So it just scores that edge and then I can kind of pull it and the paper pulls it. So you next... see this edge here? Next week when we come back, um, I'm going to top coat this paper. I'm going to use the same gator hide that I used underneath it on top of it. Um, it'll be nice and dry so I can do that. Haven't decided. What do you guys think? I haven't decided if I want to distress these edges or not. Let a little bit of the wood show through. Help me out with that, guys. Do you think I should lightly distress? I mean, I never heavily distress. I just mean along the edges. Now, obviously, some people are talking about signal and as far as different things that we can do. Okay, I'm going to read through all the suggestions afterwards, you guys. Is it Speedify? Um, Is that what we... We're on Speedify right now. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't work very well. <laughs> <laughs> um, what Speedify does is it... Thank you for whoever suggested it. I read up on it. Is it combines your cell phone signal and your Wi-Fi signal. Um, however, only one of them works out here. So um, I, I, our next stop is to go to our cell provider and see if we, about getting like a hotspot or something. That's kind of, we're kind of done with the Wi-Fi thing. I'm over it. <laughs> it's frustrating as all heck. So that's kind of the next step. It's not for lack of trying, I promise you guys. And then after that, I guess we'll just put a tower next to the house. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready to get one of those we'll towers. do that. One of the ones that looks like a fake tree. Ooh. Yeah. Lease out a piece of our land. That's where I am right now with, with Wi-Fi in the country. Okay, so I've got a nice clean paper edge. All these little pieces I can pick off once my paper is dry. Um, but that just kind of scored the edge of my paper. And so I'm gonna set this aside and then here I'm gonna let it dry. So I just caught it in a different light and I don't like this side right here again. And there we go. Yeah, no, distressing came up, and you're only doing that to hit the side. No, I would only, right. I'll give you an example on this drawer because I have to touch up the sides anyways. But I would just sand it a little further in, just along the edges. I would let the white of the paper peek through. I mean, it's, it's so fake looking. It's actually kind of funny. So I'm just, keep, I'm just working this paper with my brayer a little bit. It's getting better every little time. Kind of get the corner in there. And I can use my finger too. Yeah, that helped right there. Okay, that's better. I can deal with that. Looks much better. Let's put these aside. And then be Okay. Hey look, we're back. Yeah, surprise. Um, I've got the warm tones on my top. I've got warm tones in my copper hardware. I wanted to tie it in with a third slot and do copper dipped legs on this. I just thought that would be pretty. My body color on this, we use Dixie Belle Caviar. And then if I turn it to the side a little bit, can you see those little green highlights we put in on the side? They came out really pretty. That's oh, yeah. Can you see the little green highlights I've got? Yeah, so let me that's... try this way. Hold on, hold on. Because I'm trying to... There we go. Okay. That's Dixie Belle Palmetto is the green that we used. So I've got the black and the green are universal throughout the piece. And now I'm going to put um, copper. So Dixie Belle makes patina paint. And patina paint is a paint that has metal flakes in the paint. And if you add a corrosive spray, the patina sprays, um, it will create verdigris copper. Um, they have bronze and iron too. So I'm going to use the copper, but I'm not going to use the spray. I'm going to use it just as a pure metallic. Um, and the patina paints cover great. You don't have to use them with the spray. You can use them just as a metallic. So to do copper dip legs, I'm going to take some painter's tape here. Okay, we're clear now, so I'm not going to move. Um, another thing, you guys, it's always clearer on the replay. So if you're feeling like it's too fuzzy to watch live, 
Um, watching live means you're splitting the connection with, you know, 400 other people or however many we have on at the time. So sometimes coming back and watching it on replay when it's not buffering, um, you get it, you get a clearer picture too. Okay, so I'm gonna take it, and what I did is I lined it up. I lined my tape up with this spot on the front where, um, you know, this trim okay, kind of ends. Get in, instead of five feet away. So I'm making sure my tape is nice and well adhered. Pressing it on. It goes all the way around, so all four sides of my leg are gonna get copper on them. And then I'm gonna take my Dixiebel Copper Patina Paint now, because the patina paints have metal flakes in the paint, some of it can settle down to the bottom of the container. So I'm going to take a stir stick, and I'm just going to stir my patina paint. I always make sure and stir these really well. There's a few things that I like to stir rather than shake. The patinas are one. Gator hide is another. Um, but I want to get them nice and mixed up. Okay. And then I'm going to use a smaller brush for this since I'm only doing this little detail. I'm going to use the Dixie Belle Flat Small. And um, this is where having different sized brushes comes in handy. And I'm just going to do, I'll probably need to do two coats of this. But I'm just going to do some copper here. Now when you're painting metallics, you want to make sure you get clean brush strokes all in one direction. Because metallics reflect light. Um, you will see if you've got, you know, crazy brush strokes, you will see that. Now that can be a pretty look if you're going for like a brushed metal look. But if you want a clean look on metallics, just make sure your brush strokes are nice and clean and even. So I'm going to come back and clean them up so they're going um, vertically rather than horizontally. And I just want to say thank you to the 200 people that are on. Oh, only 200 this week? We had like 400 last week. Where'd you guys all go? Was it that disappointing? Wow. <laughs> I guess when you can't see and whatever other variable you want to throw I know, in there. I know. For paint would be really pretty. What do you guys think? Shall we put copper leafing over the copper paint? That would be pretty. Maybe next week we'll do that. Um, next week on this piece... I'm going to turn this so we can do this back leg here. So next week on this piece, we are going to add some interest to the hardware. I've got this plain copper hardware so far, and it's really, you know, simple. Okay. Um, so what I was saying is I'm going to add some interest to the hardware next week, and then we'll put a clear coat on everything, and I'm going to do the finishing touches on this. Like, you know, what do I do inside of drawers? And, um... Uh, things like that. So we'll do all of our finishing touches this next week and this piece will be done and ready to take pictures of. I'll talk a little bit about next week about how I would stage this piece too. So um, you guys can see like I can dip my brush just in the lid of my copper paint but these get really good coverage for for metallics. So I like to use um, a base coat of a similar color underneath. If I just wanted the copper, I would use like a, you know, chocolate or coffee bean, maybe even terracotta under the copper. And then the paint itself, these get excellent coverage. I'm not going to put any patina spray on these. I don't want the green to come out in it. Critical of my own work. Really critical of my own work. It's hard for me to have my own pieces in my own house. Um, so... I always appreciate the feedback because, you know, self-confidence is one of my biggest issues I struggle with as a painter. And sometimes you will build up a piece and you guys kind of renew my confidence. And I always appreciate that. Sometimes it does. Okay, we're back. And I watch them back. Sometimes it says... It's so I can't say bad things about you? <laughs> <laughs> you say those we're when, on. You say those when I'm on camera anyway. That's true. I just do better when it's, you know, a couple hundred of our closest friends. Yeah. <laughs> you like to keep, keep it between the family, huh? I like to keep it real. Okay, so this is my third dip leg. So tonight we stained the top. I'm almost done here tonight. Where'd you get the rollers? Um, these are available in my Amazon shop, which I will link. Um, I will link on the post when we get off tonight. 
I have these in my Amazon shop. It's about what, $25 for a set of four. Um, I've said this before, but they only work well if you have a smooth surface to roll them on. Otherwise they find any crack or crevice and fall into it and your piece falls off. So I hated them until I had a smooth floor to use them on. Deborah says when, when we're frozen, the voices are gone too. Oh. Sweet. Yeah, well, you think, and then we watch your back and it's like, you know. He said cu that. Cuss words. What the? And, yeah. That's what we're really seeing when we take a break. Because I'm so frustrated with the connectivity issues. I'm Agreed. so frustrated. And we both are. It's just been a constant battle. It's not for lack of trying. I do appreciate the feedback and the comments. A lot of things we've tried. Yeah, we listen. Um, you guys are more than patient because you understand it's also a live video, which affects um, video quality. But when I put these on YouTube, it gets relentless. Good thing I have a sense of humor about everything, right? Let's just go over here so I don't have to see the back try to see through you. Okay, so... Okay, that's fine. <laughs> and go. So, so we have our four dipped copper legs. And this piece to me feels really masculine. I feel like it would be in a room with like leather and um, plaid. And um, so I just think tying it in from top to bottom. I made a post on my page. And when I think of an inspiration, whatever that inspiration is, what type of room this would go in, I stick with that all the way through my piece. So I use that vision that image you know if you're doing a princess fairy tale piece i would think of princess fairy tale in every decision i make um this one's rustic masculine if i'm doing a piece that's you know our last one that was green and rusted i just keep that vision in my head for every decision um you know should i use patina should i use copper or gold um it helps make those decisions when you kind of have a a theme if you will so did you um, just do air quotes? Yeah, a theme. Okay. <laughs> so, I think that's about it for Let's this. Let's get to week. the important thing. Yeah, next week we're going to finish this piece up. We are that close to being done. I really want to finish it. I'm dying to take pictures of it. Um, so next week I will do the finishing touches. We'll work on our hardware. I'll show you how to clear coat a dark color. Um, we'll do all that stuff and get it done. And then I'll talk a little bit about staging this piece. And um, we will have another start to finish tutorial. So I hope that was helpful. We made some corrections to the decoupage process. And let's get to the good stuff. Yeah, and the paint giveaway. I there know, we go. I know. Nobody really wants to watch me. You guys just want to yeah. some paint. Let's right? just hurry up and get to the end. I know. No, Dixie Bell's really great about giving us giveaways. And you guys, I'm a sucker for people who haven't used the paint before, too. If you haven't noticed, I really like... Um, I really like to, I don't like giveaways where every where one person wins everything. I like to spread it out a little bit. And I like to, um, you know, I like people who haven't had the experience to really learn about the paint. So this is our opportunity. Here, I'm going to set this. Somebody made the comment about the pink one in the background. So Oh, yeah, there's your view. We'll focus I'm, in on I'm that choosing. one. Jeopardy music. Okay, our winner tonight, our winner tonight is Jennifer Jordan Jensen. I just like your name because it's all J. Yeah. I think it's awesome. Jennifer Jordan Jensen. Um, congratulations. You won an eight ounce of Dixie Bell paint. Now our um, giveaway process is a little different if you've watched the previous videos. Um, the giveaway process is I need you guys to message Dixie Bell paint on their page. Message Dixie Bell. And they will issue a credit. And the reason for that is then you can order other things with your giveaway if you want to also. So that was something we were running into instead of just shipping your giveaway. And if you want more things, you have to do them separately. Now you can order those all together with your giveaway too. So message Dixie Bell Paint on their page. Um, this That's the page we're watching on. Send them a message. Let them know you're the winner, Jennifer. Um, under the videos tab. And then you know what dates to look for. Um, so either YouTube or on the on the Dixie Bell videos tab. Um, so I hope that helps. Congratulations to Jennifer. Come back next Thursday, same time, and we're going to finish this piece up. It's going to be beautiful. Thank you guys so much for hanging with us tonight. Just really quick, can you what colors did you use on the pink one? Okay, that pink one over there has um, Dixie Bell tea rose. Here, let's go ahead. 
Okay. Sorry, we were trying to wrap it up, and I saw the question about the pink piece. Kind of threw everything into a frenzy here. So uh, I have a full post on that pink piece on my page. If you search, you know, brush by Brandy and search, um, oh, you know, it doesn't say pink <laughs> in the post, I don't think. Um, it's one of my recent ones, though. But to go over the colors on that, it has tea rose, it has apricot, it has soft pink, and then the salmony color at the bottom, I mixed with Dixie Belle terracotta, rustic red, and tea rose. Went into that salmony color mix. I like playing with the colors. You can mix them together and create any color variation that you want. So, um, so that's a custom mix color at the bottom and then some other colors on their own up through the top with a paper on it. So, and it's the same decoupage process um, that I did on this piece. It's just a 